So you recently worked with Guy Spear on his memoir. What did you learn from that process? Guy actually became a great friend during the process, and so part of what I learned was from sitting around with him endlessly over cups of cappuccino in his uh, in his house in Zurich, talking about about life in the universe. And one of the things that really struck me about Guy is he has this very strong belief in in what he describes as the compounding of goodwill, mm -hmm. and. And you know we often talk about compounding money, right? You know, if you invest for a long time, your your money and stocks and the like compound, compound, make you enormously rich. Guy's view is that there's this much more profound and important type of compounding of, mm -hmm. of goodwill, where he really takes this seriously, and so he's created this incredible web of of uh, goodwill by just acting kindly to people. And he, he's done an enormous number of acts of kindness to people. My, my son is at Harvard Summer School at the moment because Guy sent him there and wow. sponsored him to go. And so it's very deeply sincere. And the paradox that I think Guy discovered, which I think is very profound, is that when you start focusing more on other people, helping other people, you actually become happier yourself. And so he said he kind of started acting that way, sort of cynically, because he thought it would help him in life and he'd become more professionally successful because you know people would feel good about him. And then he said he became kind of addicted to the good feelings that it aroused in him because he just really enjoyed helping people. And, and so it's, it's really become a way of life for him. So that was a very profound lesson. And the other thing that I learned from Guy that was really interesting was that he was brutally honest in telling his story in his memoir. Mm. And so he would talk about all sorts of um, ethical temptations and failures and, and uh, you know, the, the greed that he felt in his early years as a sort of Gordon Gecko-like banker and mm. how, how tempting that was and how he'd be jealous of various people who were billionaires and the like. And then he talked about sort of shifting from that way of seeing the world to be really thanks to the example of Warren Buffett to becoming a much more decent, much more, much more honorable guy. And, and what was fascinating to me was that in writing extremely honestly and candidly in his book, he kind of struck this chord where I think, uh, you know, readers just saw that he had tremendous integrity and authenticity. And so the book has done incredibly well, but not just in terms of sales, although it's done very well in terms of sales, but he's received you know, well over a thousand emails and letters from people saying how much the book had touched them mm -hmm. and, and affected their lives. And that to me was very powerful, this idea that if you're actually, if you're actually honest and have integrity and authenticity, even in talking about your flaws and your failings and your mistakes, that resonates somehow with people and it's better than actually just making a sales pitch and saying, you know, look how fantastic I am and pretending that you're somehow flawless. That seems like a very rare trait in huh. somebody like a world famous hedge fund investor. I think it's but difficult, but he, he and his friend Monish Pabrai, who's another famous uh, hedge fund manager, take this idea very seriously. And part of it stems from reading a book called Power Versus Force, which had big influence on both of them, hmm. which has this idea that, that you kind of vibrate at a higher level in some way if you're honest. And so Monish mm. also has this sense that he's just going to tell the truth. And so Monish had a terrible time during the financial crisis where you know, his fund went down something like 70%. And he said, I just told the truth to my investors. I said, you know, it didn't go down because uh, the market got killed. It went down because I made this mistake, this mistake, and this mistake. Mm. And he said, almost nobody bailed out of his fund. So he said, really, what people care about is that you treat them honestly. So I, to me, that's a very profound and yeah. kind of thought-provoking idea.